Welcome to Lecture 15 of Aerospace Propulsion. Today we'll do the first of two lectures uh, related to the design of turbo machinery in our new efficient aircraft engines. So what is the turbo machinery? Compressors and turbines. So up to now we've assumed that we can construct machines capable of producing the pressure ratios and efficiencies that we selected during our engine design process. So now we're going to turn our attention to how to actually achieve those designs. So this is again, this is going to be still a somewhat simplified treatment. We would need at least an entire course for in-depth treatment of turbo machinery. There'll be a little bit of a review here from aerospace uh, engineering fundamentals, but it's been a while, so it's probably okay. And what we'll be able to find is the number of stages that we need, shaft rotational speeds, their diameters, and some information on the flow path. Key messages are that turbo machines are comprised of stages. Uh, a stage is two rows of blades, one rotating uh, a rotor and one stationary, a stator. The pressure, ri pressure rise in a compressor stage is much smaller than the pressure drop in a turbine stage. The Euler work or turbine equation relates the stagnation enthalpy changes to flow turning. And velocity triangles allow for easy switching between reference frames when the flow moves from stationary to rotating blade rows or vice versa. So our design problem is the turbo machinery for the new efficient aircraft engines. So we'll carry out our design at cruise with fan pressure ratio 1.5 um, based on the analysis of the engine that we came up with in uh, the chapter 7 material. All right, so what is a turbo machine? A turbo machine is a rotating machine with exchanges work between a fluid and a shaft, normally via blades. And we'll focus on axial turbo machines here, where the flow is primarily in the axial and tangential directions. There may be some radial flow components present, but it's normally going to be pretty small. So turbo machines are divided into stages. Um, the pressure rises in a compressor, of course, with there, and we must always be aware of boundary layer separation and the possibility of rotating stall or surge, which are flow instabilities associated with blade flow separation. To enable the large pressure ratios that we want, therefore, we have to have many stages in our compressors. Um, a modern engine compressor would probably have 10 to 20 stages. And every blade row has many blades. Between 30 and 100 is normal. So you can do the math and start getting an idea of how many blades you have to make um, for, for the compressor of an engine. In turbines, of course, the pressure falls and we can usually drive six to seven compressor stages with one turbine stage. The loading limits are much higher. And this is because of the favorable roll pressure gradient that they have. But extremely high work extraction in a turbine stage will reduce the efficiency. So we still need multiple stages in modern engines. Now axial turbine machine blades turn the flow. That's what they do. We can use simple control volume analysis to reveal that basically if we turn the flow, that means that the, f uh, the force, uh, there's a force exerted on the gas by the blade to do that turning. And the turning of the flow also is also going to alter the cross-sectional area of a stream tube of flow. Um, the area is going to increase in compressors because the flow, in the relative sense at least, is slowing down. And the area decreases in turbines because the flow is speeding up. I want you to explain what I just said. Um, what's this relationship between turning and acceleration? Why does turning the flow alter the velocity in the stream tube area? So think about this question for a few minutes and try to come up with an answer for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video. And we'll also take this up during the tutorial.